All right, first of all, I again want to thank all of you for participating. It's been a long afternoon, but I feel very energized. I think my group anyway was spectacular. Uh, and I think what we'd like to do now is invite these, these reporters as they were, the collectors of the best ideas from each of these breakout sessions to come up and share, uh, share just very briefly uh, what they would consider to be the highlights, the takeout messages from, from the breakout sessions. And I guess, you, Jesse, get off the phone. <laughs> oh, do we need to, do we need to take a pass? Okay, okay. <laughs> Thank goodness, Nancy Sutley is short. <laughs> okay, you all really look like you belong here. I just want to tell you that. So, our group had a fantastic conversation. We started by answering the question of what is the goal of this environmental movement, and we went around the table and we said, you know, it's to build a clean and renewable and just and sustainable movement that we want massive historic levels of investment in clean energy, but we don't just want that. We also want to get rid of the subsidies that are going to dirty energy. Um, we talked about the need to support young entrepreneurs. Um, we had a lot of innovative ideas on the movement that we want to build, but we wanted to spend most of the time discussing uh, what it would take from this administration to feel like we were really working together and engaged. And some of the ideas that we came up with are, we need more forums like this. This has to be the beginning and not the end. That, that the administration can help us by making some of that decentralized so that we have ongoing conference calls. That we as a movement can be helpful by making sure we're giving more people access to what's happening in the administration, that we're forwarding along uh, information and updates and those updates are going out. That we're using social media to engage people. Um, there was talk about the need to try to bring people together around a common purpose like there was around the election that brought people together from lots of different issue areas and that's a critical aspect moving forward. Um, we talked about the need for more meetings with high level officials in the White House and I think there's a commitment on both ends to continue to make those things happen and actually needing, um, you know, more engagement from the president himself on these issues and for young people to be able to hear from him directly. Um, I think, I think the, the best thing at the end was that there is commitment on both ends to make this happen. That the folks who are in the inside used to be on the outside so they get it. We as the people on the outside committed to work harder and build bigger numbers than we've ever built before and the folks on the inside committed to making information accessible. So, and we learned that just because Van left, who was one of our inside heroes, we've got new heroes who were here all along, like Amy Salzman and Greg Nelson and Hannah and Cal Penn. Is this one working? Do I have to go up to the podium? Good, I'll stay down here. Uh, Amina West was in John Carson's group. Excellent. Thank you. I'm sorry. And thank you, Jesse. Good afternoon. Well, evening now, folks. Um, Jesse said a lot of, um, you know, what we found to be the case also in our seminar, in our forum. I would have thought that maybe she was uh, listening through the wall. Um, but that's a powerful testament to the fact that we're all on the same page. Um, we're all excited and energized and ready to um, join hands and join arms and partner and, and build linkages, you know, that support the networks um, that are going to advance um, the, the goals of this administration and our collective goals of energy, um, independence, environmental stewardship, et cetera. Excuse me. Um, so just to make a more specific recap, um, we started out also saying that, you know, the youth um, are, the for, are at the forefront and the leaders of this, of what needs to be a movement. You know, that Obama's election was a moment, um, but it was a movement that elected him in a moment. And it's the movement that's going to need to carry us forward um, and, you know, to bring about the necessary changes and how we could really use Obama's support and Obama's reaffirmation along the way. We all acknowledge that Obama's busy. Um, so we need to, um, it could be very useful for us to get regular or periodic interaction and access to other members of the administration, other members of leadership um, to come into our communities, to come into our youth activities, come into our 
university centers and, and events um, to galvanize the message, to reaffirm the message, to give us that sort of support. Um, we spoke about um, the power, of course, of social media, viral media, and using that as a way to connect our energy, but also to um, capture um, our power as consumers and as purchasers um, in the economy, and use that power to sway and to persuade big business um, to align and to promote and to buy into and to invest in um, better and more sustainable uh, techniques um, for producing, using um, energy and for being um, environmental stewards. Um, and let's see what else. We spoke about um, also using or creating a, two, a mechanism for two-way interaction um, with you know, the administration and representatives thereof like CEQ perhaps the CEQ Youth Advisory Board comprised of maybe 20 or 50 folks cross-sectorally, cross-industry, and cross, across the nation um, who could be points of contact and points of dis dissemination points um, that could be just in a click of a button and this, uh, you know, in the send of an email, um, be able to disseminate the messages um, and, and, and the movements um, that are going on internally within the administration. Um, we spoke about, we reemphasized re um, again, uh, bringing young folks, so K through 12, you know, starting there and helping to inculcate um, an attitude and awareness um, around energy, around, you know, engineering, um, around food, around sustainability, and so that we have then coming out about us, you know, because we, you know, before we know, we're going to be talking, you know, from your, you know, from the standpoint of the Obamas and beyond saying, oh, you know, I was of a generation that yada yada yada. Better to say that you know I helped to create a generation um, that ushered in an era, you know, that brought about the sustainability or the cap, the save, the save, the saving, um, the capture, the, the liberation, the sustainability of a global community. Um, and so, focusing energies and efforts on STEM education um, and using you know our platforms and university settings and what have you um, to be an avenue for that. Um, and I think that's you know really, really using our savviness as young folks and our innovate our innovative minds, our ability you know we're not so embroiled hopefully in politics that you know if we have access to conference calls or we have access if we have the opportunity to be in the room we can say things that will not otherwise be said you know for fear of by part fear of partisanship or fear of you know oh who's going to call me on that the lobby's going to call me and yank the plug we have a lot of power our voice is very powerful and. Um, you know, it would be very helpful to have avenues that allow us to express it, um, both, you know, within government, but also, you know, in, in the corporate space and helping, um, my last point, um, I think we spoke a good deal about helping, um, using our power, using social media, et cetera, to connect dots um, and helping corporations and big business to see around the bend and to see that tapping into previously unrealized, underrepresented, and, and, and under-resourced communities and pockets of energy is their competitive advantage. So I think that's kind of, hopefully I landed somewhere in the middle. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Great. Thank you very much. Sujatha was in, in the group I was in. So I'll make sure she tells the truth. <laughs> We're going to charge rent. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Um, okay, well, I think in our group, really, the overarching theme seemed to be an, an, an enormous amount of energy to really help the administration tap into networks uh, that already exist in our communities uh, to amplify the exciting work that we heard about today. Um, and so I think just looking at how to categorize it, I think it fell into two major categories. The first is things that are kind of cool that are already happening with the Office of Public Engagement and other outreach efforts that we could even do more of um, or even tweak a little bit for this uh, issue space. Um, so the first was um, on healthcare. There have been a series of, of conference calls that have really engaged. I think I was on a few that had, yeah, I think, hundreds if not thousands of young people on them uh, that gave an opportunity to ask the White House directly questions uh, about what w the current um, state of the debate was and where the White House was at. And I think expanding that to energy, our group thought expanding that to energy in the environment space would be, uh, would be useful. 
Uh, second uh, is uh, there are currently uh, uh, forums going on in the states uh, that engage governors and stakeholders uh, all over the country uh, and to actually do an active effort to engage the youth constituency in those uh, forums would also be something that would be, uh, you know, seemed like a real relatively easy add-on. Um, third was that there was an example of um, an agency providing a blog with a, a tailored response. I, I forget, was it with you? EPA. Um, EPA, yeah. There was a, 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 one of the bloggers in the room had posted some um, critique or some comment on, on action by EPA, and EPA actually provided a tailored response to that um, comment, and, and doing more of that um, would also be, um, you know, I, th I think help build the relationship uh, with the youth constituency. Uh, and then finally, the um, in the kind of do what we're doing but better category was uh, creating a dynamic platform where uh, work on energy um, and sustainability and environment is, is housed in one place. Uh, and um, Amy brought up the point that that exists for healthcare, uh, but then it, we could also expand that to uh, the environment. Um, and there was a pitch for the CEQ website in the short term, um, but then uh, we could potentially <laughs> pull, uh, pull more stuff into um, a, a standalone website. Um, and then on the new category, uh, the, we also had the idea of the advisory board. Um, the one issue that came up with that was that there are lots of federal regulations that govern how often a, a body can meet. Uh, um, and, and, and then that, whatever, that creates a whole set of other requirements. But one idea was that we could, as a youth community, create our own advisory board and then invite uh, folks to engage on that from the administration. And that might sidestep a lot of those, um, those uh, 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 technicalities. And so that's something that would be, I think, interesting for us to continue to, to talk about. Uh, and then finally was the idea of doing some sort of monthly digest update uh, that compiles a lot of the information that we heard today uh, and um, also gives a preview of things coming down the pike that then we could blast out to art networks uh, to, uh, to, to really bring people into the process. So that was our group. Thank you very much. <laughs> Rachel Butler. Hi everyone, you look great. Um, <laughs> you do. So um, in, in our group, we talked a lot about the need to continue this conversation, um, the need to institutionalize a way of two-way communication between the Obama administration and the youth climate movement. Um, there were a number of different suggestions that we came up with um, as to how to make this possible, the idea of conference, calls was brought up, again, the idea of a youth advisory board to connect leaders in the youth climate movement to, um, to the Obama administration. Um, we talked about the need to, um, we talked about the work that all of the secretaries and the departments are doing on, um, on local work and the, the work that they're doing out in the field. We talked about the need to bring members of the youth climate movement into those events, into those discussions, and use that as a way to, um, to move our work forward. Um, we talked a lot about the need for President Obama to lead from out in front. Um, he needs to address the nation and he needs to address Congress on um, on climate change, on sustainability, on the need to move forward on this, and we need to get serious about the scientific realities. Um, we heard a lot from the secretaries today about the scientific realities, and we need a plan and a timeline to get us to 350 parts per million in the atmosphere. We t spent a, quite a bit of time talking about that today. Um, we need a timeline. We cannot wait. The science is telling us that. Um, we talked a bit about um, the economy, the fact that our generation is the, has the highest rate of unemployment out there, the opportunities that, um, that climate change and the current economic situation present to, um, to move us in the right direction, um, the, the possibilities of, of green jobs training programs, the use of um, stimulus funds to help move us towards a sustainable economy and a sustainable future. Um, and I think we, we all recognize the great opportunities that lie before us and the, the necessity of, of two-way communication and continuing the, the great work that we started 
today and long before today. So Great. that's it. Thank you. And I think our last presentation is a pair, Lauren and Kiernan. Unfortunately, both of us need this, so <laughs> I have two. So. <laughs> So um, actually, everything that was said was pretty much what our group said. But um, the biggest thing that we harped on um, were, were two things. One, unlikely partnerships. Like, what, what are those, and what do those look like? And then how do we formulate those to really um, bring in people that aren't necessarily always at the table? And that's including organizations that are outside of, of the green sector. And then um, we also talked about education um, and bringing in Two, two parts to it. One, K through 12 um, being very, very important and what that means. And then also education for communities that are not necessarily, that are underrepresented and um, underserved. Um, and how that um, in itself can help drive a lot of the solutions. And then I'll let Lauren, Lauren? Mm -hmm. yeah, talk about the other stuff. <laughs> Okay, um, well just to add on to the um, education part uh, and the unlikely partnerships, the youth younger than college age is an unlikely partnership. And by targeting K through 12, I think we can really create a whole culture of environmental literacy and that's where it really needs to start um, and encourage entrepreneurship together. Um, we actually had a treat of hearing from somebody in our group um, that was an entrepreneur in green technology and we um, you know, started discussing that and realized that there are very few incentives um, out there for small businesses or entrepreneurs that are looking uh, to create um, these really interesting technologies and a place um, that can be utilized to uh, encourage that entrepreneurship is the K through 12 area um, where they're engaging in really creative projects or testing these products and um, you know, learning about environmental issues uh, from a very young age. Um, and we also talked about in addition to entrepreneurship, uh, encouraging the competitive spirit in America and really engaging people not just from you know the youth uh, climate uh, organizations and not just from the White House, but you know everyone in between and all citizens to engage in um, a very competitive um, field that is emerging and get everybody involved. Um, and another great concern, just like everyone else's, um, was the legacy that Van Jones has left behind. And luckily, that there has been a legacy um, left in the White House. Um, so I just wanted to share a little bit of information that we got from our leaders um, that I hope everyone else got. But just in case, um, if you want to be put on a listserv um, to get uh, information directly from the White House, get your pens ready. <laughs> um, email youth. All right. <laughs> anyway, I think also, it, sh it should be. In, it's in your packet. packet. It's in. Okay. It's in your resources. Okay. But it okay, was well, in the handout. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that information is youth at who.eop.gov, and you can be put on a listserv to get that information. Um, so part of it is seeking out that information, and you know, also having that transparency there to be reciprocated. So. Thank you very much. And now you, John Carson. Oh. I think she had a question. was can we create you know an email list within our group but can we create a listserv that includes all of us you know who are leaders who are active who are aware in this in this space so that we can also communicate with each other yeah I think that's a really good idea just because um, when you look around the room there are so many little organizations that are working on um, you know each little bit of sustainability and environmentalism and they're all great but you know we do need to come together and not everyone can fly to Washington um, to have these forums so yeah I think um, can we set up some sort of a system? The would be super proud to help facilitate that. We'll get all your names on the list. We'll send lots of emails, and we will go fight to make this world better than we ever had before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, may, so maybe if each uh, leader of each breakout group could collect that information, that would be pretty efficient, and get it to well, Jesse. Or yeah. yeah. There we go. Uh, before the door. After party. <laughs> um, and John Carson, please come up and, and give us a final kick. Okay. Well, 
Thank you, everyone. This, this was an incredible afternoon. And thanks to all of you who are hopefully still following us at home. What I wanted to close, uh, what, <laughs> what uh, I wanted to close with tonight was to sort of take a step back and talk for a little minute uh, uh, about a word you hear an awful lot, change. And, and what, does it, what does it really mean? I think that actually the best way you can measure change that's occurring is not by the arguments of the day, but by the things we aren't arguing about anymore. When's uh, the last time we had a national discourse over when, whether or not women should have the right to vote? When's the last time that what was being fought about in Congress was whether or not we should have a 40-hour work week and overtime for more than that? Are we still fighting with corporations over whether or not asbestos and DDT um, are an integral part of our economy or not? And, in, and more recently, with, with the recent shift in, in uh, administrations, we're here today talking about a clean vision for a clean energy economy, not whether or not energy efficiency is even a good idea or not, or, and whether or not we should open up ANWR for oil drilling. So sometimes you need to take a step back and, and take a look at the, the milestones of, of where the dialogue has taken us. But if you, if you do look back at the fights in history, what you'll notice is that those key moments when things really changed, there were pitched battles over what was going to happen. We often look back at, at FDR's term or, or what Teddy Roosevelt did and, and just see the monumental shifts that, that were taken. But I encourage all of you, take a moment, look back at what happened in the Congress of, of 1933 and 1934 and just the vitriolic statements and fights that were going on over what we now re regard as just complete common sense that that's the direction that, that our country went. And, and, and I encourage you to take a moment to stop and look where we are now. On the health care debate, for instance, we're fighting over particular pieces. Will there be a public option or not? But there are monumental reforms that are already a piece of, of what everyone assumes is already going to be uh, happening. We're debating, is it going to be 14 percent, 17 percent, 20 percent reduction or cap uh, by 2020, not whether or not global warming is real or not anymore. So, what I hope you don't lose as we're so involved in those incredibly important details is the big picture. And what this idea of a clean energy economy and the fundamental paradigm shift that that would be um, in our day-to-day -day lives and, and how incredibly crucial having climate and energy uh, legislation pass this next Congress is, is to that paradigm shift. We often get uh, so caught up in the details um, but take a moment and think of, of, of what that uh, will mean. And what I want to talk about is how we're going to get there and, and the incredible power that all of you have. We, um, this was an incredibly informative session for us. We heard directly from all of you, and we have a list of how we can do a better job of, of giving you the tools that you have. But my main message that I hope you all leave with today is do not wait for us. Go out there and get this job done. And I want to um, thank you. Um, <laughs> I want to I wanna talk to you about the incredible power that you all have. And the first key piece of, of making this transformational shift is really each individual local example that all of you are fighting for. I heard some incredible stories, uh, both in the questions today and the breakout sessions, of what you are accomplishing. And what I think oftentimes our generation um, doesn't uh, remember is the the speed with which you get things done. Those of you who grew up uh, doing uh, uh, IM in grade school forget uh, to take some time, talk to somebody over 40 about what it was like when they graduated college, had an idea, a vision of something they wanted to do, and the internet wasn't there to find 50 other people around the country who were making it happen or the ability to share their ideas. You take for granted, and thank goodness you do, the ability to get things done, find other people who are doing the, the same things, and don't underestimate the incredible persuasive power that showing people a real concrete example how they can create jobs in their own neighborhood, how they can create a healthier living style or an environment in your neighborhood, the incredible importance that that plays in explaining to people what is this big debate that we're fighting over. The clean energy economy for each person is just their neighborhood, their life, that they're leading the job that they're trying to get. And the work that I heard about today and your ability uh, 
to make that real for people and your ability to get that done is just incredible. And, and please don't underestimate the incredible importance of that. The second piece is I want to invite you to help us change this government itself. Um, I had a really eye-opening experience uh, about a couple months ago when I took a trip to Chicago and sat down with some people who were working in the environmental area in Chicago. And someone said to me, um, you know, John, I, I went into the uh, local office of this uh, particular agency that I'd been working with for years, and I, um, you know, I was so happy when President Obama was elected, but when I walked into that office, I didn't, I didn't see the change that I thought I was going to see. And I explained to him that, look, what we have done since we've been here is changed the leadership. In that particular agency, we changed about four people. And it is your responsibility to show up at that office twice as often demanding the changes that, uh, that this administration stands for with us. Mo changing uh, the way the federal government operates, fighting this fight through Congress is an enormous undertaking and we need everyone involved in that and do not underestimate the role that you can have. A, a great example that I heard today, someone asked the question to me, what can we do about the Recovery Act and the fact that so many of the dollars are caught up at the state or local level? Well, dive in and help find the solution. Sit down with your city government. Sit down uh, with your governor's office. Help them find a solution that works for you. What you take for granted in, in, in this generation of ours is we find that solution in Los Angeles. We find it in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The ideas and the information are going to flow at a speed that we've never seen before, and you're going to be able to help us just dive in and, and make this difference. The, the final thing um, that I would talk about is Again, as we debate how we're going to get to this clean energy economy and what legislation is going to be like that gets us there, it is so easy to get caught up in those incredibly important individual details. But I'll tell you, the key to making that legislation as strong as possible is not to sit back and debate and snipe about who's doing what and are the right people involved. It is to demand action, is to demand pre uh, to put pressure to make things happen. Because I'll tell you, those details, we can either get lost in the weeds, fighting over those in individual details, all incredibly important, but what will make the result the one that we want is this overwhelming demand, this pressure for action, which will, as the, the final pieces are figured out, the greater the pressure is to get something done, the better the finer, final product, the most likely that particular piece that you're concerned about is going to end up the, the right way. And then we will pass clean energy legislation and we will be in this, this, new, um, this new world with, with this paradigm shift where we're not fighting over the old debates anymore and everything you're doing um, trying to make happen is going to happen at an, at an exponential rate. So please go out there and make it happen.